Praise the Lord. So good to see you all today. Are you glad to be in church today? Amen. Amen. A day to worship him and magnify the Lord's name. Amen. As I always say, you can stand, sit, however you may feel, but we certainly want you to worship the Lord with us this morning. In my brokenness I've got true love instead of pain There's freedom though you captured me I've got joy instead of mourning There's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love I've got true love instead of pain Oh, there's freedom Joy.
Sorry about that. <laughs> Can't play without this music. All right. <laughs> Desperation When all we know is doubt and fears There is only one foundation We believe We believe broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing. And in our weakness and temptations, we believe. of you believe that he's coming back again. He is the resurrection and the life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know also that God is a good God. Every good and perfect gift come from above. He's come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. The enemy is come to kill, steal, and destroy. 
So we need to always remember, if anything bad, I know people have a free will, and they make wrong choices. And yeah, in this life, they're held accountable for it in many ways. But let me tell you, even though they make wrong choices, you know who's the one giving them the idea behind it is evil. Behind all evil is Satan. Behind all good is God. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. How about you all? Sing it with me now. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God, yes. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life, all my life you have been so, so good with every breath. sing of the goodness of God, yes, cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me, yes it is, cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me, when my life laid down, I'm surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life and all my life you have been faithful. How many of you know that's true? And all my life you have been so good, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I'm going to sing the goodness of God. I'm going to sing, I'm going to sing, yeah.
Oh, hallelujah, I'm going to sing. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you know God is good? Okay. All right. We're going to get ready to do the graduation, but I want you to turn around, just wave at one another and say hello to one another. And say happy Father's Day. It's a great day. Come on back, Pastor Michael. He's going to do the graduation. You may be seated for a moment. I want everybody, if you possibly can, stand this time. All right. Praise the Lord. This is always a great time of the year to, we want to celebrate and congratulate and honor our graduates. We have two from high school, or well, three from high school, excuse me. One is not present today and one from college. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead with it. The, Michaela Carr, she is not present today. But she graduated from Northern Nash, and she plans to work one year, and then after that year, she plans to attend Nash Community College to further her education. So I'm going to give uh, this car to Brother Skip here. <laughs> so give, she's not here, but give Kayla a hand. <laughs> Michaela, excuse me. We have Kayla's and Michaela's, Michaela, excuse me. All right, now, second graduate we honor today is Katie Collins. Katie, come on up. <laughs> Katie graduated from Nass Central High School. She participated in the art club and the FCCLA, graduated with a GPA of 3.6, and she is going to pursue a BS in elementary education at East Carolina University. She's going to be a pirate. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Katie. You can. No, stand up. Keep, keep stand up here. I'm sorry. I'm new at this kind of thing. Come on up here. <laughs> Stay with me. All right, just to the side. That's right. Okay, it's usually, usually the youth minister does this, but I'm in charge of this this year, so. All right, so the next graduate we have is Randy Vick. Come on up, Randy. All right, Randy, for those of you that do not know, is my nephew. Uh, his, my wife's brother's son, so... Uh, his dad, Guy, and Michelle, his mother, Michelle Vick, that's their son, my nephew, Randy. So Randy, I've seen a lot of Randy over the years, and uh, one thing about Randy, he is peaceful. He never gets in a hurry. I've never seen this guy get in a hurry for anything. I know he makes it on time, but sometimes I wonder. <laughs> but <laughs> Randy graduated from Faith Christian School in Rocky Mount. Okay. 
He played soccer there. He was a member of the National Honor Society. He participated in the martial arts during all his school years. He was a member of the FH Sharpshooters. And Randy is pursuing a BS in art at Barton College. He's going to be a bulldog. All right. Here's a little simple gift from the church, Randy. I yeah, appreciate it. But anyway, God bless you, and uh, congratulations. All right. All right. So our next graduate is college graduate. It's Courtney Hunter. Come on, Courtney. Courtney has just graduated with an associate in applied science in the physical therapist assistant program at Nash Community College. She has already been hired at manual therapy in Rocky Mount. She's working there now as an intern until she takes her board exam, which qualifies her to be licensed and therefore carry out treatment sessions independently. And actually, uh, Courtney, uh, one of her clients, when she was doing a lot of her uh, uh, work and her, and her trials and all her clinics, was Brother John Naren here in church. So uh, she helped get John back to where he needed to be. So anyway, congratulations, Courtney, and here's a simple gift. God bless you. Everybody stand. Give them another big hand. Good job. Just watch out. Congratulations to all the graduates. Praise God. A uh, quick announcement. Uh, we will be making our group reservation tomorrow for the King's Dominion trip. I've had several adults say they want to go. Uh, you're welcome to go. You're welcome to come along if you like. So, but we're making those reservations tomorrow. Because of COVID, they only limit so many people, so you won't have to stand in line as long. So they've got a limit on the people. Uh, now, if you want to go with us and you want the group rate, which is $40 a person, you need to turn your monies in to me today because we're making those reservations tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Brother Wayne. And I'm excited for all of those graduates. A new turn in life, right? <laughs> oh, it's good to see all of you. And again, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. And I happen to be one myself, and so uh, it's been good. There's times it can be challenging, right? But it's good, isn't it? And we, we serve a heavenly Father. He loves us all. Isn't that great how God loves us? We were talking about that when we come into church this morning. Brother George was talking to me about it, and Brother Renee said, you know, it's raining outside, and we need the rain. He said, I thought about that, that God is good to the just, and the unjust, because it rains on the just, and it rains on the unjust. God just loves people. All you got to do for God to love is breathe. He may not love some of the ways of men, but he loves people because he sent his son Jesus to die, right, for our sins. Well, we got coming up, uh, rekindle the fire Sunday. Ushers, get these out. If you haven't taken one, please get it out. Please put it up somewhere conspicuous. We are believing for a great move of God that day. And uh, we had to kind of change direction this year because of everything that's gone on. But uh, we're going to have a great one-day meeting. Pastor Dean Perry will be here in the morning. And that evening, Brother Donald Moore will be here. It's gonna, uh, that'll be July the 11th. So that's only, what, maybe three weeks away or something like that. It's not very far. So let's get these out. Talk it up. I mean, it's going to be a great, great time. And you don't want to miss it. And let me see. Oh, I want to mention this. Let's pray for, uh, for Sister Faye Colley. She fell and she broke her hip bone. She's in the hospital now. And so they can't operate for various reasons for that as of right now. But we're going to pray that she's going to make a full recovery. 
Praise God. She's going to heal. She's going to get back on her feet. And let's believe not only that, that she'll be stronger than she was before. Amen. Because God is a healer. He can do what man can't do. He can do what even doctors can't do. You know, you can break a bone and the doctors can set it, but only God can fuse it back together. And so God can do the impossible. What's not possible with man, God can do. And let's remember Brother Carl Short. He's getting better and better and better, but it's little day by day in physical therapy, but little by little, we're seeing an improvement in him almost every day. And we want to remember Sister Margaret Chance. Sister Margaret, uh, she's been uh, in and out of the hospital a few times, but she's, her faith's still strong. Our faith is strong with her. We're standing. Like that song says this morning, we believe. How many of you believe? Shout, I believe. I believe. Jesus said to Jairus, believe only. Only believe. So that tells me no room for doubting, no room for pouting. Come on. Believe, only believe, only believe. Martha, didn't I tell you if you would only believe, you would see the glory of God? So no matter what these circumstances rises up in against our life, we're going to stand on the scripture, we're going to only believe. Used to sing a song way back, and it's still, I tell you all to bring it back more today. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. I'm a believer. Tell your neighbor, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. So let's pray for them, and uh, we got, you got something? Oh, okay. You want to make an announcement about the ladies? Okay, come right on. Just wanted to remind everyone for next Saturday, all the ladies, um, for our morning sure. breakfast um, fellowship. Um, if anyone is still wanting to come, we still have the sign-up sheet outside at the Welcome Center. If you would sign up this morning so we would have a close to a head count of what we're going to have for next Saturday morning at 930. And I hope to see all of you there. Thank you. Good, good. Get, get the lady ministries cranked up. I tell you, if you don't get something done, get the ladies cranked up. I'm telling you, they can get it done. Amen. And so we're happy about that. And I believe everything is going back to normal real soon. Look, Wednesday evening we had service over at the old campus, and it was great. You do not want to miss it over there. I'm telling you, you got to come. You got to come. It was great. We had a wonderful time together, praise and worship and the word. And I got two or three things running around in my heart and mind that I may preach for Wednesday night, but possibly I may teach on being still and know God. We live in a time people are not still. I mean, they may sit down a few minutes, but their mind is going 90 mile an hour, 100 mile an hour, 110. And they may be even trying to get a little rest physically, but they're not resting in the Lord. You know why I know people are not resting in the Lord? We all have done it because to keep right on worrying, keep right on fretting, keep right on. And there's only one way you can get to really know God. There's a lot of variations and of things that are incorporated in that, but there's only one way you can really get to know God. You got to get still and know that I am God. That means you got to calm your head down. You know, we say mind, but I like to say head. You got to get that head straight. Because a lot of times we don't have our head on straight. Isn't that right? And we got to calm down physically, but we also got to calm spiritually, get tuned into God so we can hear God. Because like never before, we need his directions. We need his instructions. We need to know what he has planned for our life and carried it out. Amen. All right, everybody stand again. We're going to receive our tithes and offering. Now, we ought to really get happy about tithes and offerings. I, I've often wondered why in the world people don't get more excited about It's not just a duty. It's not just an obligation. I mean, the Word tells me to do it, so I do it. Gladly do it. But I know the results of giving. Is this a happy crowd? If you're happy, I'm going to give you something to do. Notify your face. All right? Go ahead and notify your face. 
Now look at your neighbor and say, I'm happy. And after they look, if they weren't happy before, they'll get happy right now just looking. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right, are you ready to give? Tides and offering. Tides and offering. Play us a little something, Pastor Michael. Or sing something. And thank you for, our, for your tithes and offering. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God All my life And all my life You have been faithful All my life And all my life You have been so, so good With every breath that I Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life and all my life you have been faithful all my life and all my life you have been so so good with every of God oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God oh hallelujah praise the Lord you all may be seated. No, I'm not going to preach. But I'm standing here to this table because I need it. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers one more time. And Bishop, I just want you to say, you said everything that I was going to say before I sung this song. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I believe. I want you to say that with me. I believe in the power of God. Amen. And, and, and I do want you to know I want to... I'm going to get you. <laughs> this, this, the title of this song is, I can go to God in prayer. And, and how can I do that? How can you do that? It's because we believe in the power of prayer. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Makes no difference what the problem I can go to God in prayer. Listen, yes, I have this blessed assurance. I can go to God in prayer. He will take my gloom and sorrow. Turn it into God, 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 God. He will come. Keep me. I can't go to God. This 
say happy Father's Day to all the fathers today. I once heard a story and uh, it was like, it's like 15 years ago, but I'm sure, I don't know what the statistics are now, but I'm pretty sure they're close or along the same trend. But I remember Barna put out a, a da some data and it was amazing and the, and the statistics were this, and it said that 17% of the time when the, when the mother got saved in a family first, that the rest of the family came to the Lord. We thank God for the 17%, but that's not too high. Said when a child got saved first, then the mother and father came along 33% of the time. The rest of the family got saved. Okay, that's higher, but still only one-third. That same statistical data said that when the father got saved first, that 93% of the time, the rest of the family came to the Lord. Now, I'm certainly not minimizing the role and the leadership that a mother gives or the role that a child plays in a family. But 
I'm telling you, that's why God had a purpose. And he, not in a dominating or domineering way, but he put man as the head of the family. He knew what he was doing. And there's something about a father. When a father takes his rightful position and leads his family into the Lord, I'm telling you, great things will happen. So fathers are of immense importance in their lives of their family. Amen. And that's just one example. Well, as you saw, I want to say congratulations once again to the graduates. And today, I've got something I'm going to talk a little while on that could be helpful. Yes, it's, it could be somewhat geared to the graduates, but it can be geared to all of you. I don't care what age you are. Now listen, we all need to be confident in who God called us to be. Every one of you are individuals and you have something to offer in this world that nobody else has. But too often we compare ourselves to others. We don't think we measure up. We don't think we're good enough because we're always looking at somebody else. In fact, the root of many people's problems is they're trying to be something that they weren't called to be. Listen, if you're going to experience this God's best, you've got to learn to be who God made you to be. You can't go around comparing and competing with other people. You can't live with the joy and peace and please everybody else. You've got to run your best race. So the title of my message today is Run Your Best Race. And I put an accent on your on purpose. Don't be a copycat or an imitation. Listen. You might not be like anybody else in your family, maybe not even in your community, but that's okay. Run your own race. Run your best race. Your attitude needs to be, God made me who he wanted me to be. He gave me certain gifts and talents. I don't have to have everyone's approval to feel good about myself and to run my best race. Listen, I'm not talking about being rebellious now. I'm not talking about not abiding by the laws or being a fool, okay? When I, when I say you need to be yourself, well, if yourself is temperamental and mad and you're just trying to be cool, just to be different, to be cool, then that's not cool. But what I'm saying is be who God made you to be. Talk with others. Deal with others in everything you do with your personality. Don't feel like you have to be somebody else. Do things the way God's called you with your gifts and your personality. Amen? Now some people say, well, if I just had her looks or his looks or his brain or his talent, everybody has talents. Every single one of you out there has talents and you have abilities. You just have to discover them and apply them to your life. And quit apologizing and feeling bad about yourself because of who you are. Listen, I'm a short guy. I don't feel bad about it. I mean, there used to be a song called Short People Got No Reason. Well, that ain't right. I've got full of reason. I've got Christ in my heart. I've got plenty of reason to live. <laughs> and I've got tall sons, and I don't know how that came about because nobody in my family is tall, but uh, maybe it's the antibodies in the chicken, they say. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, some people, some people have strong personalities. Well, that can be good if you're going to be a leader. Just do things in love. Don't be too overbearing, but be, it's good. If you've got a strong personality, God made you that way for a reason. Just still do things in love, right? It seems like so many people are trying to be something they weren't created to be these days in so many ways, and I'm not even going there. But my God, listen... 
If God created you to be short, if he created you to be tall, if he created you as an African American, as a Caucasian, whatever he created you, be proud to be who you are because that's how God made you today. He didn't make anything bad. He doesn't make junk. Everything he did had a purpose behind it, and you're a part of that purpose. You know, I have found that I don't have to be like everybody else. It's okay to be me, and that takes the pressure off. I'm not saying that we don't need to work on ourselves. I'm not saying that we don't need to make our weaknesses stronger. But our basic personality would never transform into something totally different because God made you who you are. So stop comparing yourselves to others and be who God made you to be and run your best race today. You see, to be honest with you, life, we would, cons we would say in many ways, if we looked in the natural, it's not fair sometimes. I mean, some people are going to look better. Some people are going to have more money. Some people are going to be faster. They're going to jump higher. They're going to, they're going to be smarter. They're going to learn quicker. I mean, you could compare on and on and on and on and on. I mean, everything is relative, right? I am not a rich man as far as maybe what people would say in monetary value. I'm not a millionaire. But to somebody who's barely making it, because God, thank God, he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. But someone maybe that's just barely making it, I'm rich relative to them. But I guess compared to Bill Gates, we're all poor. It's relative. But, ha but I've got to say that God has been good to me today. And rich, it, now I'm getting all a little aside here, but rich isn't always monetary. Yes, God wants you to have wealth. It's okay. But see, rich is being full in every area. Good relationships, good health, adequate supplying of your needs. Amen. But many times we compare. We look at this. We're doing fine until we start comparing other people. Some of you today could get your joy back if you would start, stop, excuse me, comparing yourself to everybody else. Run your own best race. Proverbs 4, 25 through 27 says, Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Do not get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Romans 12, 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. You see, what happens though is many times instead of rejoicing with those who rejoice, we are not doing that. We're rejoicing with those who mourn and we're mourning with those who are rejoicing because we're trying to compare ourselves to them. But you see, everybody's plan is different. Everybody's destination is different. And it takes different time periods to get there. Some people get married at 22, and if that's God's will, and you're mature, and you have everything kind of ready to go at that time, that's okay. But some don't marry till they're 25, some 30, and some don't marry at all. And look, God loves you no matter what you do, but he doesn't want, he wants what's your, the perfect will. So I say to everybody, look, the average female today gets married at 28 years old. The average male is 30 and a half. So don't feel like you're not a part of the norm because it's better to wait than to make a bad decision. But you see, God's timetable is different for everybody. 
I didn't get married till I was 29, but I've had a good marriage. You see, I was not very mature at 29, but I sure was a whole lot more at 29 than I was 21. Amen? I'll say that for myself anyway. So, some today have compared yourself to others and said, sure didn't take them long to achieve what they're doing. Why is it taking me so long? Well, that person was all right. They didn't question anything. They were full of joy until they started comparing themselves to somebody else. Listen, you shouldn't really want what others have because that would be second best for you. God has a perfect plan for each individual in here today. In fact, Galatians 5.26 says, Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Envying one another. Don't do it. In other words, what is the Apostle Paul saying here? He said, stop comparing, competing, and run your best race. The moment we start to compare, the moment we start to compete, we lose our joy, and we lose our joy, we lose our strength, and we become sour, and we become sad, and we become defeated. I'm not going to compare what I do to others. I'm not going to compare my timetable to others. God has a different timetable for everybody. He has a different occupation for everybody. He has a different calling. He has, they have different personalities. They have different strengths. So you be who God has made you to be today. I'm not trying to be arrogant when I say this. But, you know, you, if somebody doesn't like my personality or sense of humor, I can't help it if something's wrong with them. You know, I'm kind of joking, but in a way not. So many times we think the opposite. We ask, how am I going to fit in? What are they going to think of me? Will I be accepted? Listen, be who you are and who God has made you to be. And be secure in who you are in Christ. And your real friends will always accept you as you are. They'll love you as you are. Right? Understand this today. You are anointed to be you. Nobody else. There's one thing that nobody will ever beat me at. And that's being me. You can try to be me, but you'll be second best because I'm anointed to be me and you're anointed to be you. I personally was anointed by God. Now, I'm not saying this in an arrogant way. There are a lot better singers than I am. But one thing I feel like I was anointed and I enhanced that gift. I studied for a long time, but was to sing. Some people are gifted in selling. They can sell anything. Some people are gifted technically, or we'll say with computers. They can fix computers. They can figure things out and do things I never could even dream of. Some people are mechanical, and I certainly not have that gift. They can fix anything. You remember when I was a kid, I remember we used to take these. It was called, I don't know what's comparable today but they were called California Achievement Test. you remember the California Achievement Test? Man, I was rocking spelling. I was in the third grade, and they said I was a level of a 12th grader speller, in the level of a 12th grader. But on mechanical reasoning, I was at 5 percentile. That means that 95% of the nation's kids were more mechanically suited to do things than I was. But you know what? I didn't cry. I didn't get sad. I didn't worry about it because even at a young age, I knew God had some gift for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know how much spelling's helped me along the way, but you know, not too much probably. But I am a good speller. So. But I've been gifted in other things, right? So have you. We don't all, we're not all good at the same thing. That would be a boring world if we were all thought the same, looked the same, did the same thing. There'd be no need for one another then, right? 
Right? Praise the Lord. See, when you step out of your anointing, you are going to struggle. And you're going to be frustrated. That's why it's so important to do and to be who God made you to be. His plan for your life is not the same as somebody else's. I knew these guys in high school. Well, I say I know them. Not very well, but I knew of them. And one guy was a really, really great uh, football player. And he had a brother that was a very good basketball player. And uh, his brother had never played. And this guy, that, the, the main guy I'm talking about, played football. I mean, he, he was recruited by all kinds of D1 schools. I mean, he was he's fast as lightning. And his brother was an excellent basketball player. But his brother decided to go play football one time. And his brother was not as good as his older brother. But, or younger brother, actually. But you know the thing is, he was what he was trying to do. He was trying to be like his brother. And it's okay to be somewhat like your sibling. But he was more successful in the other sport, you see. And that's where his gift lied. So sometimes we try to chase things, somebody we know, somebody we see or close to. We think, well, if they do it, that means I got to do it. No, you don't have to do it. I mean, you do what you're gifted at and what God has called you to do. So, right? See, this guy was trying to run his brother's best race instead of his best race. Galatians 6, 4 says, each one should test his own actions. They can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. In other words, quit focusing on what everybody else is doing and focus on your own life. Now, yes, we do need to care for others. I don't mean like that. That's the whole thrust of the gospel, love for your brother. The Bible says, how do you even know that you're a Christian? Why? Because the love you have for one another, doesn't it say that? So I'm not, yes, we need to be public-minded, collective-minded in the sense that we love one another and the sense that we want to help one another. But you need to be individually-minded on doing what you need to do and what God has called you to do because each individual is different. Focus on your life in that sense. It says, then you can take pride in yourself without comparing yourself to somebody else. Why? Because you're running your best race today. Paul is saying here that if you don't compare yourself to others and just focus on your own race and be the best that you can be, then you're going to feel full of joy and good about who you are. It's when we start comparing ourselves that we lose our joy and we lose our confidence. The Bible says that the paths of a righteous man are ordered by God. See, if you're in Christ, your paths are being ordered by God. Sometimes doors close, we think <clears throat> that we become disappointed, but they're closed for a purpose because if you're righteous, your paths are ordered by God and it's a good thing that that door is closed sometimes. And sometimes he opens doors that we don't expect. And that's because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And he has ordered your paths today. You can be excited about that. I don't care how old you get. You, God orders your paths. If you're, if you're 92, he's still ordering your paths. He's still taking you in the right way. He's still giving, providing healing. He's still providing joy. He's still providing all these things for you. Oh, hallelujah. See, even though the paths of a righteous man are ordered by God, we, and we need godly advice, we need to listen to men sometimes, but we ultimately trust God, not man. That's what happened to David. See, David had to face this. David 
had to face this when he told King Saul that he wanted to fight Goliath. Saul, in essence, said without speaking to David, you can kill him, David, but you must do it my way by wearing my armor. Saul was telling David, you got to do it my way. So David didn't know any better, so he was an obedient man of God, you see throughout the Bible. So he put that armor on. Turn to 1 Samuel 17, 38. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. See? David, though, finally became bold and said, Saul, I cannot walk in your anointing. i got to walk in mine. So what did he do? David said, I can't go in these. I can't go in this apparel, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So he took them off, right? David was trying to walk in Saul's anointing, in Saul's armor, but you see he couldn't do it. He had to walk in his armor. He had to do things God's way for him. See, none of us will ever defeat the giants that come against us when we're wearing somebody else's armor. you got to be yourself and walk in your own anointing with your own personality that God gave you. See, David took off that armor and put down the fancy sword and he reached in his pocket and got out a slingshot. <laughs> See, Saul, everybody thought Saul was the man. Saul is a tall, handsome man, head and shoulders above the rest in the natural. But you see, God was looking on his heart. David was just a simple shepherd boy and had no experience. But he wasn't looking, see, David wasn't looking at what he did not have, but he was looking at what he did have in Christ, in God. So David went on without Saul, Saul's armor and he defeated the giant. You know the story. Took the, hit Goliath in the head, knocked him out, killed him. I want to ask you today, are you by chance wearing somebody else's armor? Are you being who God created you to be? Or are you going around being what everybody else wants you to be? Like I said, I'm not saying to be rebellious. Yes, we should follow rules. We should obey our parents as we're growing up. We should respect uh, law enforcement, respect teachers, respect coaches, give them honor. I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. But at the same time, you got to do what God has called you to do with who he made you to be. And if you're trying to live up to everybody else's expectations or somebody's but not yours, you're not walking in your anointing. You see, the longer I walk in God, I learn that if I'm being who God has made me to be, then that's okay. As long as I'm not defiant, as long as I'm not rebellious, as long as I'm walking in His ways, being the best I possibly can be, then that's okay to be who God made me to be. Be who God made you to be. Quit living to please others and walk in your own anointing. Don't make the mistake of comparing your life, your looks, your talent, your intellect, and so forth and so on and et cetera and et cetera and et cetera. No, don't do that. Run your own best race. And instead of being jealous of others, look, remember, everybody has different timetables. Don't get upset if somebody gets married young. In fact, you might look back and say, oh gosh, I wish I would have waited till I was later. Don't get jealous if somebody gets the job early. Hey, I heard a guy the other day. You, this was really good. He made it public, so I'll tell it. Do you remember Rod Allison that came here, the comedian? He's attorney by day and, uh, and comedian by night. <laughs> That's just funny, just even thinking about that, isn't it? A comedian, uh, an attorney that's a comedian. But anyway, a Christian comedian. 
Well, anyway, he was talking about the other day, he said that God orders our past. And he was saying, you know, on Facebook, he said, look, he said, when I first got out of law school, he said, I went to Carolina Law School, got out, and I got a fantastic offer for a law at a law firm. He said, but the problem was I was going to be working 80 hours a week. He said, and uh, my wife was all excited about it because of the money I was going to make. And, and he said, I was excited. And he said he went in and talked with him. And he got out and he said, and two minutes later, he said he felt a check in his spirit. He said, don't take that. And he did. And he said, you know, if I would have taken that, I'd have been working 80 hours a week. He said, I had a small young boy at the time. We were married. He said, I would have never had any time to spend with that child. He said, I'd have been working so much. It was a, I had just been married a few years. I might have lost my marriage. He said, I look, and I certainly wouldn't have done any Christian comedy because I wouldn't have had time to put together an act, he said. He said, I look back at it. He said, and I'm glad that I didn't rush into that. He said, I'm glad that I listened to that still small voice on the inside. He said, because I've had a successful marriage. I've been doing Christian comedy. I can still have my law practice, and I don't overwork myself. He said, and God has been good to me. He said, but if I would have not, if I'd have just pushed it, just to compete or just to get ahead, or if I wouldn't have listened to that small, still small voice, he said, my life wouldn't have turned out as good as it has. Amen. So, folks, I, I, I leave you with this. If you will be the individual that God made you to be and not go around and comparing and competing and trying to get everybody's approval, you will fulfill your calling and you will be a joyful person in this life and you'll be successful in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a good God, isn't he? Praise God. I just thank the Lord for his goodness. I thank the Lord for his goodness on my life. You know, I had to run my own best race. You've had to run yours. And I know that you've had opportunities that look good, but you felt that small voice, didn't you? You said, don't do it. And then you, there's some said, don't do it, and you did it anyway. And, well, it didn't turn out so good, did it? Because, see, God orders our paths, but we got to listen to him. we got to do what he says. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with him? Praise the Lord. Look, I'm just going to collectively do this. I feel this today. This is Father's Day. I'm not going to take real long. I know many of you are probably going to go out and celebrate. And if, those that, if you don't, you know, you're going to enjoy yourselves today and do whatever you're going to do. But uh, I just want to say, uh, I feel collectively, not, I'll pray for you individually, but uh, if you would, anybody has any need for anything, whether it's financial, whether it's healing, whether it's uh, relational, whatever it may be. I want to ask you to come down here all now, anybody. Brother Bill, could you play us something back there? Please. The, the Lord is good. See, this was more of a teaching message, but the Lord can still work through teaching. I mean, he can still, if, if you got something on your heart and you need prayer for, for any reason, come down, and I will pray for you. Sure, absolutely. This is my former pastor. Uh, okay. Was heard last night. Born to sorrow in ages, in twenty-four hours, sailed home as the Lord commanded. Anybody else today?